We went from Kyle Busch leading the Daytona 500 with three laps to go, with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. winning the Daytona 500? What just happened here? Hey guys, it's PJ. Let's talk about the Daytona 500. Is this the Daytona 500? Oh, no, 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 it can't be. It's the commercials 500. Let's talk about it. NASCAR has returned to the 2023 season, and I was really looking forward to the 2023 Daytona 500. Wow, this Daytona 500. I do not know where to begin with this. I can only describe this Daytona 500 in a certain way. Light the fires. Showtime. Whopper, 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 junior double, triple. I don't drink any alcohol. If I wasn't a sober person, I would probably lose track on how many times that Fox showed so many commercials during this Daytona 500. Into turn four, we had a huge pileup involving Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, and Daniel Suarez, among others. You would think that Fox would actually cut away from commercials and just go back to the race. Nope. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. And after that, let's show commercials that really do not matter at all. This is happening during a wreck. Wrecks are part of the racing. You would think that Fox would cut away from commercials and go back to the race. They didn't even do that. The only time they came back from commercial break is when Eric Jones starts backing up into pit road. They didn't even inform us if the drivers were okay. If you're going to have Mike Joy call the race, then let him call the race. The thing that is very frustrating about this is that Fox had a side-to-side -side view of the Daytona 500. If Fox is going to have side-to-side -side view of the Daytona 500 along with commercials, and if something happens during that time being and you're not going to break away from commercials, then don't even have the race on the side then. You can't have it both ways. I did not even know that Bubba Wallace was leading the Daytona 500. That's how much they missed out on this race. Even Mike Joy did not really enjoy this Daytona 500. You can tell by the tone of his voice, he was just not in it. This was actually the worst coverage of the Daytona 500 I ever seen. And I've seen a lot of Daytona 500s and I never seen it this bad. Beside the commercials, there were some nice moments in this Daytona 500. Harrison Burton leading the Daytona 500 with the Wood Brothers was a very nice moment. I don't know what happened to Harrison Burton, but I know that he dropped like a rock during the restart. Brad Keselowski was also leading the Daytona 500. He also won stage one. Even though they were able to win stage one, Brad Keselowski unfortunately finished 22nd after being involved in the big huge wreck on the final lap. Ross Chastain did lead the Daytona 500 and even won stage two. Travis Pastrada led one lap and that was during the pit stops. In the first 100 laps, we had two wide pack racing. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately for me, the drivers I picked for the 2023 Daytona 500 backfired. Ross Chastain, Daniel Suarez, and Martin Truex Jr., at least half of them were in wrecks. Bubba Wallace was even part of my predictions. Unfortunately, he was involved in a wreck as well. And Kyle Busch was one of my other predictions for the Daytona 500. Kyle Busch did not even finish in the top 10. He finished in the 19th position. I was really rooting for him, even though I'm not a Kyle Busch fan myself. He's got the lead with three laps to go. Kyle Busch has this. There's no way that he's not going to win the Daytona 500. Few moments later. It's oh, there's a Suarez. Caution. Moments later, Daniel Suarez spins. I was thinking maybe NASCAR will not throw the caution. They have done this before in the past. Back then, NASCAR in 1998 did not have the overtime rules, which is true. If Daniel Suarez did not get stuck in the grass, NASCAR would probably not throw the caution. Pit Road is not that far from him, so I don't understand why he just didn't turn onto Pit Road. Kyle Busch was not very happy on how NASCAR really handled this. Here's what he said. I think this is the first time I led lap 200, so I wish it was 1998 rules. Part of the course, just used to it, and uh, come down here every year to just find out when and where I'm gonna crash, and uh, what lap I come out of the care center. I mean, were you confident going into those? to overtime the first one as the leader or because of your history it's I don't like, think you're ever I don't think you're ever confident who won I don't even know who lucked into Stenhouse. it Stenhouse there you have it I do not blame Kyle Busch at all I know there's people out there that will say he's a crybaby and he's complaining he has every right to complain here I'd rather see Kyle Busch winning under caution than seeing Ricky Stenhouse Jr. winning in such a bad way if it wasn't for Christopher Bell pushing Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. would have never won the Daytona 500. I understand that NASCAR is about the safety and the drivers, 
but this is the Daytona 500. You got to let them race back. Another thing about Ricky Stenhouse Jr., he is now officially in the playoffs. This is what really concerns me with the whole playoff format, is that drivers that shouldn't be in the playoffs enter in the playoffs. Just imagine this, having Rick Ware racing in the playoffs. For an example, let's say Riley Herbst or somebody from Rick Ware Racing <coughs> wanna race. They are automatically in the playoffs. Can somebody please tell me why Cody Ware is still in the Cup Series? Here are the results from the Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won the Daytona 500. Joey Logano finishing second. I feel like that NASCAR really screwed over Joey Logano. The pitchers really speak for themselves. Joey Logano had this race. Christopher Bell finishing third. This was the only Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota that finished in the top five. Chris Buescher finished fourth. They had a really good car during the Daytona 500. A really good run for them. I'm really happy for them. Pole sitter Alex Bowman finished fifth. AJ Amendinger finished sixth. A driver that was really unexpected to finish in the top 10. And to see him perform at a super speedway was very impressive. I think that AJ Amendinger is going to have a very good 2023 season. Daniel Suarez came back from a spin somehow, finishing seventh place. Finishing eighth is Ryan Blaney. Ninth is Ross Chastain. And the 10th position is Riley Herbst. I find it very interesting that Travis Pastrada finished 11th after being in that huge wreck on the final lap. The scoring loops from NASCAR is really, really questionable. I really want to know how Daniel Suarez came back from a 7th place finish. I really want to know. Fox didn't even show us on what happened with them. They didn't show the car going down pit road. They didn't show them repairing it. It's a mystery that will probably never be solved. What do I think of the 2023 Daytona 500? I really think the racing was pretty solid. I understand sponsors have to pay for the Daytona 500, NASCAR, and Fox. But running commercials every five laps or so and not actually cutting away from commercial and going into the race itself, you're missing out the whole race. I'd rather see NASCAR return to CBS. I think that would be a very fresh start for them. After seeing this Daytona 500, Fox has been very disappointing. What are your thoughts of the Daytona 500? Love to hear it. And congratulations to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on winning the Daytona 500. If you want to see more videos, don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and comment. I hope you guys are doing well, and take care.